So again, a lot of what you'll find in this study guide should be review, but it's about reporting numerical data correctly or making correct conversions with numerical data. I have no doubt that you can do derived units. You may not have called them derived units in the past, but once you see what this is about, you'll be like, oh yeah, I know what this is, I can do this. A derived unit, now this definition is weird, it's, that it's units that measure a proportionality and are created by multiplying or dividing units. Okay, well, I kind of like that last part. Here's what I think of. A derived unit is just a unit that results from a calculation. And so again, like this whole multiplying and dividing kind of makes sense. These are units that result after a calculation. Here are your best examples. Area, volume, and density. And again, so here's the part that I, I think you'll get. You'll go, oh yeah, I've calculated area since I was a baby. Length times width, right? Okay, so why does that matter in chemistry? Well, now we're not only concerned with the calculation, but are you reporting your data correctly using the correct unit? So let's say you measured your length and width in meters. And again, one of the things that we have to remember is before we can multiply length and width, they do need to be the same unit. So if somebody measured length in meters and width in centimeters, before you can calculate area, you would need to make a conversion so that somehow they're both the same unit. Okay, so now if you multiply meter times meter, your final unit should be meters squared. Wow, that was earth shattering, wasn't it? Duh, you knew that. But now we're just going to call it this fancy word. Ooh, it's a derived unit. It's a unit that resulted from that calculation. If somebody didn't even put a number in, but I saw the unit was meter squared, I know whatever it was, it's an area. It was two like length measurements or distance measurements multiplied together. Like a length and a width. Oh, yeah, that was an area. Or if I saw something that looked like this, centimeters cubed. Or maybe I see something like meters cubed. That's a volume measurement. And again, you know volume is length times width times height. And again, before you multiply those distances, they would need to be in the same unit. So these are all in centimeters. Well, then your unit just reflects the calculation. You multiplied centimeter times centimeter times centimeter. So magically, your final unit is cubic centimeters. I can tell that that unit represents a volume. Oh, density is mass per volume. So it's always going to be a mass unit divided by a volume unit. So something like grams per milliliter. I could look at that and even if there wasn't a number with it, whatever it is, I can tell you that's a density. It's a mass unit divided by a volume unit and the final density unit reflects the calculation. It was a division of mass and volume. Now you could have all kinds of options here. You could have something like kilograms per liter. And I could say again, oh, whatever it is, it's a density. Kilograms is a unit of mass divided by liters, which is a unit of volume. Now we're going to measure density in the lab. Another option might be something like this. Grams per cubic centimeter. It's a mass unit divided by a volume unit. Often, like the liter, milliliter, is used in the lab if the substance was a liquid. 
If you want to find the volume of a liquid, you just put it in a graduated cylinder and measure its volume by milliliters or liters. One of the objects that we'll measure in the lab is a solid. And so to get its volume, one option really is just to measure the length times width times height. Your volume then might be in cubic centimeters. So grams per cubic centimeter is a totally acceptable unit of density. Another thing that we should make note of is that one milliliter is equivalent to one cubic centimeter. So really like these guys are equivalent measurements. A milliliter is the same as a cubic centimeter. So again, this derived unit, I have no doubt that you can multiply and divide. I have no doubt that you've done area, volume, and density calculations before. So I'm not as concerned about the mathematics, but I want to make sure that we're reporting our final answers properly. You would be deducted points on a lab report if you didn't have proper units along with all your measurements or your calculations. That's the difference between math and science. Math is more about the computation, the calculation. Science, these numbers mean something. I wouldn't just leave an answer in science as 52. And maybe math, that's great, the answer is 52. You did the right computation in your calculator. The answer was 52, excellent. But in science, 52 what? 52 grams, 52 liters, 52 cubic centimeters? That number represents some kind of a measurement. So we have to be like insane about not only the final numerical answer, but also putting units along with all those answers. OK, so again, there's a bunch of little examples, like little practice calculations. I would suggest pause the video, try a few. Again, it's for your practice. I mean, eventually you've got to be able to perform on the test or a quiz. So do as much practice as you need to feel confident that you have mastered this skill. And again, we'll practice in class too, but this is kind of a good way of knowing, like, am I getting these right or wrong? Do I get this? Hopefully the answer is yes. And if not, if you get a couple wrong, then those are ones that we can go together, uh, go over together in class. And if you're struggling on something, the chances are somebody else is too. So I would pause, try some of these practice calculations, then bring me back, bring back the video so that you can see the right answers and know if you are getting them correct. All right, so here are the correct answers. I would be able to do something like one and two. These are very simple density calculations, mass divided by volume. At this point in the game, I'm not super concerned with how you rounded your final answer. I'm more concerned, like, did you do the right calculation? Did you know density is mass per volume? And did you put the right unit on your final answer? Grams per milliliter? grams per cubic centimeter. Number three is some algebra. You are expected to come into this class with some functional algebraic skills. If this is something that you are struggling with, then you need to either see me or your math teacher. But again, I will expect that you can solve for any variable here. I, there are math prerequisites for this course, so if you have not met those, uh, then we might need to have a talk, but being able to solve very basic algebraic expressions like this is something that I will expect that you can do, solving for any of these variables. Uh, in number three, you are given the density of mercury. Uh, we are given the volume, and we want to solve it for mass. So we just cross multiply 13.6 times 8.2. And again, you get this answer and you can double check and make sure it's reasonable. If you take your mass and you divide by the 8.20, you should get the same density, 13.6 grams per milliliters. And we also have to make sure that the units are the same. So if the density was measured in grams per milliliter, 
my volume needs to be milliliters. If they were trying to be tricky and they gave you a volume that was not milliliters, you would want to do a metric conversion first. Then plug that into your algebraic expression. Part B, I want to know what volume would uh, 120 grams of mercury occupy. Usually this is the one that sometimes people uh, get tripped up on a little bit. Again, if you kind of cross multiply, I would be cross multiplying volume times my 13.6, and then I cross multiply here. I, I mean, if you want, you can kind of pretend that this is like over one. So it's like one times your 120. And then I can solve for volume. I would just divide each side by the 13.6. If my original density was grams per milliliter, again, I have to make sure my mass is in grams, but then my volume will come out in milliliters. It will come out in the same unit of the original density. And again, if you get an answer in your calculator and you think it looks a little fishy, plug it in. I, try it. If I take 120 grams divided by the volume that I calculated, I should get 13.6 grams per milliliter. The other ones have some areas and some volumes. If you have something like number four, where your units are the same, they're both decameters, excellent. Length times width, you're done. Your unit which mine's kind of hidden. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Should be decameter squared. Now the second one, notice the units are different. Here they're both decameter, decameter. This one is decimeter and meter. I don't care which unit you would have used as long as they were the same. So I just brought them both to meters. So my answer then is meters squared. If you switched them both to decimeters, that's fine too. Then your final answer would be decimeters squared. If you were doing a problem like this on a test or quiz, it would probably specify, report your final answer in units of blah, you know, meters or decimeters or whatever it might be. The last two then are volume, length times width times height. And again, they just need to be the same. So if I had meter, decameter, and meter, I figured, well, two out of the three are already meters. So I'll just switch the one. So they're all now in meters. I can plug them in my calculator. And my final answer should be meters cubed. And again, the last one, they were all different. It was millimeters, meters, and decimeters. I just switched them all to meters. I'll just make them all the base unit. But again, if it doesn't specify like on these practice problems, as long as you switched them all to the same unit, I am A-OK. -okay. And then you reported your final answer as meters cubed or millimeters cubed or whatever it might be, that is fine. On a test or a quiz, it would specify, calculate the volume of this object in units of blah, cubic meters or whatever they wanted. So again, these are all a million percent just for practice. If you tried them and you were getting them right, excellent. If you tried some of these and you noticed that you were having some troubles, then that would be a good red flag to let me know uh, which ones you're getting wrong and we can clear up any issues that you may be having. So if you need more time to check your answers, go ahead and pause this. Uh, a million percent just for practice. And we'll practice some of these in class as well.